I'm Kim the Abundant Traveler and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, I put out laid back luxury travel videos inspiring you to buy that plane ticket, get out there and go. If you're already a subscriber, thanks so much for coming back by. I really appreciate your support. Today, I'm going to be giving you my travel guide and everything that you need to know before you go to Portland, Oregon. Number one, a raincoat and an umbrella. That's what you have to bring. This video shares everything that you need to know, including accommodation, when to go, how to get around, where to stay, what to do, and some prices, as well as timing during the year so you're not sitting in the rain. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's talk about where Portland, Oregon is located. It is located in the Pacific Northwest, actually almost to the border of Washington State. It's a big city. It is actually the largest city in Oregon, but it is not the capital. Salem is the capital of Oregon. This city is split east to west by the Willamette Valley. And if you just go outside of the city, you have the Columbia River Gorge, which is spectacular. Also an hour to the west, you have the Oregon coast, which is fierce and gorgeous and absolutely spectacular. Portland is located in Multnomah County, which you might have heard of the famous Multnomah Falls, which I will talk about in a few minutes. It's also the home of Nike and Adidas just outside of town. This area also is known for its wine producing area, Pinot Noir specifically in the Willamette Valley, and tons of hiking. So let's talk about logistics. So how do you get here? Well, you can get here by car, but flying into the PDX airport is relatively easy. I flew out on Southwest and all the major airlines do come here. Getting from the airport to the city takes about 30 minutes. You can take the tram, which is five bucks, or you can take a Uber or a taxi. And the taxis and Ubers are about $35. You can also rent or hire a car for your entire trip if that suits your needs as well. So where should you stay while you're in Portland. Well, most of the hotels, the big chains, and I'm such a Marriott girl, most of those hotels are located in downtown Portland, right just to the west of the Willamette. Those hotels include the Nines and the High Low and the AC Marriott, as well as several other hotels. And if you're interested in a list of hotels, I have left a link in the description below. If you don't want to stay downtown, which might be a good idea. I don't know. Depends on what you like to do. You can stay a little bit further west in Knob Hill. Maybe get an Airbnb up here where there's great shopping and great restaurants. Or you can go to the artsy east side of the Willamette River. And you can go stay in the Alberta Arts District. Or you can stay over on Division or on Hawthorne. Some really great Airbnb options there as well. While I was here, I stayed downtown at the AC Marriott as I was here at a conference called Women's Travel Fest, which was so much fun. A great weekend of fellow women travelers. I've also put a link in the description below. Um, one recommendation I do have is that uh, Portland does have a homeless problem uh, and most of them are located downtown. I was fine walking at night by myself, but I can't say that I feel absolutely comfortable. Also, if you're going to rent a car, make sure that you keep your, uh, your car in a valet parking at your hotel or in a garage that is actually safe and secure. Um, I've seen several cars with busted out windows that park on the street. If you're gonna park on the street, um, everywhere in the city is paid parking. It's around two bucks an hour, but after 7 p.m. it is free until first thing in the morning. Just something to note, but then again, I don't recommend you put uh, or leave your car overnight um, on the street. Also, definitely no matter where you are in Portland and just in general where you are in the world, lock up all your valuables, put them in the trunk of the car. Just don't give a thief a good reason to bust out your window and grab you. So when is the best time to come to Portland? Well, the dry season and the sunny season is actually from June to September. That is when everything dries out. It's gorgeous here with all of this lush green foliage, all the fir trees, all of the ferns. It is incredible here. I'm actually here in March and it is raining, but I still wanted to show you what it was like outside 
and how green this city actually is. So I'm sitting in the drizzling rain doing this video. June, July, August, and early September is the best time to come. It is also the busiest season. So lots of people are here visiting the city as well as going camping, hiking, visiting all of the top sites. So I have to say I've had some great weather here in March. I've had two or three beautiful sunny days and it has been fantastic because I checked out some of the sites including the Japanese um, garden and the rose garden even though there were no roses. It's winter and there were very very few people in town so I have to say that was really really nice. The wettest month of the year per um, Google is in December. So probably I wouldn't come in December because I bet it is monsooning. I have been here five days and it has rained two and a half and it was sunny two and a half. So just to let you know, March is a good time. April's a good time. It starts to get dry, May, and then the summer, but summer comes with the crowds. Now that you're here, how long should you stay? Well, probably you can do Portland, the actual city, in a weekend. I would say two days is great. Some of the highlights are the Japanese Garden, as well as Piddick Mansion, going up to Washington Park, and eating some of the delicious seafood and great, going to the great restaurants here in Portland, also Pals Books. If you're interested in checking out everything that you need to see while you're here, then check out my other video that is the top things to do while visiting Portland. If you like to hike, you like to go visit waterfalls, you like to drive and do road trips, then I think you could spend your entire summer here because there is so much hiking, there is so much to do just outside of Portland. You can also go to the wine country in the Willamette Valley, you can do the Columbia River Gorge, you can go up Mount Hood, you can see so much in the Pacific Northwest it is gorgeous for hiking in the summer. So if you are here in the winter, then you're going to need an umbrella. You're gonna need a jacket. I'm from Texas. I've been cold the whole time. Definitely bring boots that uh, in the winter that are easy to walk. It is a city and it is very walkable. I've walked quite a lot. Additionally, bring layers, bring a vest, bring a cap. Did I say umbrella in the winter? Bring an umbrella in the winter. Bring an umbrella in the winter. Also, if you're gonna be here basically any time of the year, bring your hiking gear, bring some leggings, uh, some pants, bring your hiking boots. And also if you're here in the winter, make sure to bring your hiking gear that is actually waterproof. I find in Portland going around, most people are in dark clothes and boots. This city is a little bit like Seattle. I can't say that I've seen a lot of people dressed up very fancy in this town, but what I can say is everybody has, I have come across has been super, super friendly to me. Very generous, um, gave me directions, told me how to use the tram. So thank you very much, Portland. I appreciate all of your hospitality. So let's talk a little bit about food and drink here in Portland. Well, Portland is known for its coffee shops, which is quite interesting. I find Northern cities in general really like their coffee shops. People are sitting in front of the windows with their coffee, having, reading a book or getting their work done. It is very much coffee culture here in Portland. Also, it is a beer and brewery culture. And unfortunately, I can't speak to those because I'm gluten-free. Uh, what I can speak to though is the wine country. Portland is famous for the Willamette Valley wine country. And by the way, it's Willamette, as in Willamette, damn it, not Willamette. It's Willamette, damn it. Um, some of the best Pinots in the world are produced here. I, if you're gonna spend some time in the Willamette, I do recommend that you make reservations in advance and most of the wineries have a great reservation system on their personal website. A couple that I do recommend is maybe Raptor Ridge. Their wines are elegant and delicious. Maybe stop at Argyle for some sparkling wine and perhaps you can go to Soder or Domaine Serene for a little bit more luxurious experience. Let's talk about restaurants now. One of the most fav famous restaurants is, well, it's not a restaurant, it's a donut shop called Voodoo Donuts. So stop by Voodoo Donuts if you're a fan. There's one in Austin, so I did not stop at the one here. Definitely recommend that you get some West Coast oysters while you're here. Most do come from Washington State, but they are delicious and fresh, deep and small, like Kumamoto's and Wellies, just delicious. I recommend you have their salmon or their steelhead here in Portland. And 
And Portland is such a foodie town. So delicious, such great restaurants. One I recommend is South Park Seafood, which was probably my favorite meal in town. I also went to an old school uh, oyster bar called Dan and Louie's. And I also went to Jake's which is their Jake's Crawfish, which is one of the oldest restaurants in town. Also, there is a great bakery over on the west side, no, on the east side, over off of Hawthorne and Division, and it is called Cascadia, and it is all gluten-free. Delicious bagels and delicious biscuits. I also recommend, if you're up on Knob Hill, then you try Harlow, which is a coffee shop and a shop that has delicious avocado toast and scrambles and salad and quite inexpensive. Something that is interesting about Portland, whether you're shopping or eating, is they don't have state in, uh, state sales tax. So if your meal is 20 bucks, then your meal is 20 bucks. It's not 20 bucks plus sales tax, which has been kind of a shock uh, since most of the states do have a state uh, sales tax. Pricing, I am a, quite a foodie, so I have spent anywhere from $30 to $100 a night for meals. And of course, I'm drinking Pinot Noir, and most of my glasses of Pinot Noir have been around $15. Dishes are 20 to 30 bucks. Ubers getting around through the main part of the city are around 10 to $12, depending on the time and day. And just to note right now, there are not a lot of Ubers. So I've waited as much as 10 minutes for an Uber to go on a 10 minute ride because it was raining. Also, hotels are around. You can get a great variety of hotels for $120 to $175 a night, depending on the time of the year. And again, I'd recommend the Nines, the High Low, all of the Marriott properties, and the AC. Getting around via bus is or tram is $5 a day. Uh, coffees are around three bucks. Breakfast, if your hotel does not include it, I would say you can spend five bucks for something inexpensive in a coffee shop. As far as sights to see, the Japanese garden, which is quite famous, is $19. And the Rose Garden is free. It's also free to go up to Washington Park. And if you want to rent a car, I spent about $50 a day for the car, but I rented it twice. I did one day here and one day here because I actually didn't need a car during the conference and I didn't need to pay for overnight or valet parking. And overnight or valet parking can be quite expensive, 20 to 50 bucks a night. So that gives you a little bit of tips on what you're going to spend here. Typical large city, but not over the top expensive. So I have thoroughly enjoyed my weekend here in Portland, Oregon. It has been fantastic. Great people, great food, lots to do, and good weather for the middle of March. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know if you have any suggestions or comments or any recommendations for my next trip to Portland. I am Kim, the Abundant Traveler, and I thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, ring that notification bell, and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next adventure. Bye.